Hey everybody, Aaron here. Uh, so today I want to talk about what to me is maybe the most important riding technique to learn, especially for a beginner rider, and that is the ability to corner, and specifically body position in flat corners. Um, and not only flat corners, berm turns are very similar depending on the situation, which we'll talk about later. Um, but being able to be comfortable in a flat turn to have the proper body technique um, from your feet to your head, to me is super important. When I do riding camps kind of all over the world, the very first thing that I run everybody through is a very simple cone drill because I want to see how people are flat cornering. Um, that technique, your elbow positioning, all that type of stuff is super important and I feel like if you don't dial this in at the beginning, you will definitely limit your abilities down the road, both with how fast you can go and how safely you can ride. So um, today I'll talk about a couple of key points to consider, um, a few drills you can do that will really, I believe, help you get there quicker um, with body positioning specifically. And uh, yeah, so let's get right into it. All right, so first things first, when you're trying to figure out the best body positioning let's say for flat corners, we're gonna cover a couple other situations where this technique will apply just the same, but just to keep it basic for starters, flat turns. Whenever you're trying to create lean on the bike and you don't have a berm or a rut to support it, you're basically trying to create as much lean angle as possible while maintaining traction. That's gonna be your biggest issue. When you don't have the terrain to help you maintain traction, to say like it's totally flat, then you need to create that downward pressure and traction without having a berm or something to help you out. So to do that and to explain it as best as I can, the best way to create lean angle with your body positioning is based on a couple few things. Number one, the ability to keep your head and chest square over the bike. And what I mean by that is as you turn in, not letting the head and chest dip in with the bike and allowing the bike to separate from the head and chest and to keep your head and chest square over the bike while the bike is creating lean angle. The more you can do that, the more you're gonna create that downward pressure on the, um, on the edge knobs of the tire and be able to maintain traction without getting underneath the bike and the bike wanting to wash out from you. So um, the goal here, head and chest as square as possible. Now to do that, there's two different things you're gonna need to do that I wanna focus on in this video and that is elbow positioning, number one, and second, your foot positioning. Um, so okay, elbow positioning, number one. One of the biggest problems I find with people not being able to do this well is when they do not have their elbows out at the right angle. If you try to create lean in the bike and your elbows are not out and you have your elbows in, you're gonna run out of how far you can move in pretty quick because this elbow is jamming into the side of your body. So if you have your elbows out and you let the bike rotate this way, you've got a lot of lean you can basically get here compared to here. So first things first, elbow positioning. You'll see it through all these videos. I'll demonstrate it more. But the elbows need to be out at your sides, nice and wide, so that you create this kind of room to really move the bike around without getting locked up inside, up against your body. Okay, so elbow positioning, number one. Number two, foot positioning. Um, I strongly believe when it comes to flat cornering that having your outside foot down uh, is the best way to do this. So to explain it a little bit better, if you think about for all my motocross guys out there, on a dirt bike, you're sitting when you turn. And when you corner, especially on flat ground, you're creating this lean angle, head and chest square, same thing, but you're sitting and you can stick your foot out. That's the way you get this inside of the leg out of the way so the bike can lay in while maintaining a square head and chest. On mountain bikes, since we corner standing, taking the foot off is not always kind of the best result or the best thing you can do in a lot of situations just not applicable um, so to do that you drop your outside foot and by doing that it gives you space to really stand on that outside pedal while the body or the bike drops in and the head and chest squ stays square so I'll explain it a little bit more um, as we get riding here obviously but one thing I wanna talk about, I've seen a lot of videos explaining this and we'll go through some drills to really show how this works out and how you progress it. But there is not a, uh, let's say one size fits all technique to, okay, I've got a flat corner. That means outside foot goes all the way down. Um, that's incorrect. And I would say a lot of the times you're doing a version of it, but you're not dropping it all the way down or leaving your pedals level. So I feel a lot of people miss out when they explain this technique. 
is that there is basically a complete acceptable range <clears throat> of foot positioning for flat corners. And that goes from basically, let's say I ride left foot forward. So level pedals, or you go all the way down. This would be on say like a really sharp 180 degree flat corner where you really need to corner. But a lot of times on trail, you're not doing corners that are so long. They're more 90 degree corners or stuff like that. And a lot of times they happen quick. So being able to just like drop that thing all the way down is not practical and it's more than you need. So what I find is I basically match how far I drop my outside foot with how sharp or how much I need it. So sometimes I'm only dropping it this much, sometimes a little bit more if I need to turn more. And if it's a big flat turn, like we're kind of going to show here, then you're dropping it all the way down. So it's not always just drop that thing all the way down. It's kind of this like feel that you develop over time with the more you need it, the more you drop that foot down and the less you need it, you just don't drop it down as far. And really you're matching how far you drop it down again with sort of how sharp the corner is or how much traction you need. So um, just to review, two things, elbow positioning, letting the bike drop and then allowing that outside foot to drop down and how far to drop it. So um, let's get into a couple of drills here and you'll be able to kind of see what I'm explaining a little bit better. All right, so here we go. This would be my recommendation of the progression that you guys would want to follow to basically do this um, as safely as possible, but also I'm a big believer of eliminating as many exterior factors as possible when you're learning a technique so that you can focus on specific things. So my recommendation when you're starting these drills is start on a paved surface, um, whether it's concrete, an asphalt parking lot, uh, maybe a basketball court, something like that, somewhere where you have grip naturally. So if you mess the technique up or you're trying to learn it or whatever, you're not gonna like pay the price by being in a slippery you know, dirt parking lot or something straight away. Um, so we've got a paved surface here. I would also recommend doing it where you're gonna do maybe a 180 degree corner. I think the, the sharper and longer the turn is, the easier it is to really feel what we're gonna talk about. Um, so that's basically what we have here. So I'm gonna do, a, I'm gonna run through it a couple of times. And again, the two things we're gonna focus on is elbow positioning and foot positioning. Um, and with the goal of kind of allowing the bike to separate from the body to lean in while keeping the head and chest square over the bike. Um, keeping the weight on the outside foot so that you maintain that traction. Again, if you're familiar with say riding dirt bikes or motocross, you've probably heard uh, trainers or the expression that you wanna weight the outside peg in flat turns to maintain that downward pressure. For us, we're gonna do that by dropping that foot down. Since this is a pretty round, sharp turn, we are gonna drop that outside foot pretty much all the way. So, all right, so coming into the corner, first things first, elbows out wide, level pedals. As we turn, the bike's gonna drop in. Outside foot's gonna drop down. Complete your turn. All right, so just as a little bit of a fun experiment, one thing I like to do to kind of show people how creating the ability with your body positioning to stay uh, head and chest square over the bike while allowing the bike to drop in underneath you, um, you can actually take an arm off and show that if I had a longer arm here and I could reach this, this grip, I could let the bike drop in even further while staying on top of the bike. So just to show how important it is and kind of how the, you can create lean angle, even if you're not cornering, say this is max lean angle. But if I take my arm off, that basically proves you, to be able, the ability to keep your head and chest square over the bike with your outside foot down, even in a straightaway with no corner, you can create a lot of lean angle under the bike if you were able to take your inside hand off the bike. Um, all right, so now that we've kind of demonstrated here, let's move on to the dirt and uh, kind of expand a little bit further. All right guys, so here we are, dirt parking lot. Um, we got some cones out here. This progression that I'm gonna explain, I would recommend doing this in a paved parking lot first, but since we kinda didn't have a big paved parking lot to run through all these first, um, we kinda had to skip to this. But I recommend doing everything we're gonna talk about right now in a paved surface first, and then move on to dirt. This is a, 
super slippery dirt, so it's kind of perfect place to uh, kind of make sure you're dialing this in. So on the progression of drills, first thing I would recommend is a simple oval drill. So I've got a cone at the top here, another cone down there, and you just pick one direction over and over. Like I said, um, for me, I ride left foot forward, so right foot back. If your right foot is back, I would recommend practicing left hand turns first because they're going to be a little bit easier just to kind of rock that outside foot back. Makes more sense. Um, once you do your left turn drills, if you are right foot back, and obviously if you're left foot back, then you're going to go right hand first. Then switch it up. So for me, I'm right foot, I ride right foot back, so I'm going to do my left hand turns first. Once I'm comfortable with that, I'm gonna switch and just do right hand turns. And to do that, people get kind of confused sometimes. So since I'm left foot forward, um, when you're gonna do a right foot or a right turn with your left foot forward, this is obviously not gonna back pedal to drop down. It's, it's just gonna go basically straight down here. So you're gonna rock forward. So you'll have to kind of feel that out as you get going. So for me, if I'm going left, my foot drops like that. If I'm going right, I rotate my front foot down instead of dropping my back foot backwards. So um, anyways, if you can just separate them a little bit more like we talked about earlier, that'll make more sense. So I'll start doing some left hand turns, show you a little bit, then we'll switch and do right, and then we'll uh, switch to the next drill from there. All right, so once you've basically completed the oval drill and you guys have gotten comfortable doing your lefts and your rights and getting used to dropping either your back foot down or your front foot down, depending on whether it's a left or a right, and if you ride right or left foot forward, then I would recommend just doing a simple figure eight drill so that you can kind of loop them both together uh, back to back. So we'll do a couple of these, pretty self-explanatory, and then we'll move on. More cones for more, more turns. More turns, more better. Okay. Can you uh, zoom in and see me? Okay, so there you go. There's the oval drill, number one, left turns, then right turns, or you can do it the other way if you want. And then the figure eight, so that you can get used to which foot drops down going each direction. So once you guys have completed those two drills, I'd recommend doing a slalom drill. Um, this is good because it's going to be, you're really going to get that feel of, of how each foot drops down specifically. One thing to keep in mind when you guys are doing the slalom drill is to uh, get up enough speed so that you're not needing to pedal in between corners. So take a couple of decent cranks so that you can just coast all the way through this. I would, as we talked about, when you start the slalom drill, I would try to really exaggerate your corner so that you're getting each foot all the way down, turning uh, sharper so that that makes sense, and keeping the cones kind of tighter so that you're really having to turn a lot. As you get more comfortable, um, you can start to space the cones a little bit further out so you can do this with a little bit more speed. Um, and it'll feel a little bit more natural, I think, as you go a little faster. But um, at the beginning, I recommend just really keeping those turns sharp and keeping the speed a little bit slower so that you can really focus on what your feet are doing. All right, so we've kind of done the slalom drill to start exaggerating each turn a lot to really make sure you're dropping that outside foot all the way down in each corner. But as we said earlier, a lot of times on trail, you're not turning sharp enough or you don't need the extra traction that much. A lot of times on trail, you're kind of just like making a corner that's not this big arcing corner so you don't need to drop your foot all the way down you're just you're dropping it just a little bit it's more of a rock than it is like a full drop um, and that's something to keep in mind again and, and that feel i've found will just come over time and it will just become instinctual over time you'll just drop it kind of the more traction you need in a flat turn situation or maybe a berm turn where you're leaned over further than the steepness of the berm um, you'll just kind of naturally adjust to how much you need to drop that outside foot down. So um, now that we've really exaggerated each one, I'm going to keep it a little tighter to the cones and we'll kind of show more of that rocking technique of what we're talking about. All right, so there you go. There's kind of the uh, progression of drills that I like to do, um, and I feel like it's kind of the easiest way to learn. Again, I would start those in a, a paved parking lot, preferably first, where you've kind of got 
uh, unlimited grip, um, or at least close to it, and then move to a dirt area like this. And again, just to recap, I would do oval drills number one, um, you know, pick left side or right side first, then switch into the other. Then I would do figure eight drills and then these slalom drills. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's kind of how I go about sort of learning this, being able to develop really, it's a feel thing in time. If you guys aren't used to it, just be patient, like dropping your outside foot, whether it's rocking forward or backwards, depending on what foot you ride forward, that will just become like second nature. It's something you won't think about, but at first, um, it can be a little confusing. So just be patient. And after you kind of do these drills, I think you'll start to get it down. Um, so, okay, now that we're done with the drills, we're going to move on to a, a section of trail where we're basically going to show the same technique. Um, and there's a little bit of a berm turn. So you'll see when you need traction, it's not necessarily only flat turns where you use this. There's a lot of situations where you will use this um, when you need that extra grip. And there's also a lot of situations where you won't use this. Um, you'll just maintain level pedals. We'll cover that in a future video. There's also a lot of other things that come in to flat cornering that can be helpful um, that we'll also cover in a future video but for now i just wanted to to focus specifically on the uh, body positioning so uh, let's uh, get into the trail over here and then we'll wrap it up okay so here is a totally different situation so just to kind of show you guys how this same technique will work um, sometimes in berm turns as much as they will in flat turns now um, any situation where you need to create more lean and a sharper turn. A lot of times that's when that, that outside foot's gonna start dropping down. Um, if this was like a 90 degree corner, then you're probably not gonna drop that outside foot at all. But because it's a 180 degree corner, even though it's a really steep berm, um, it's still slippery and you're trying to basically get the bike to turn harder, create more lean without losing traction. So um, I'll just run through this a couple of times real quick too, to just show like there are some other situations where you're gonna use the same technique um, and even a steep berm turn like this compared to flat turns like we were doing earlier. All right, so here we are. This is, um, if you guys can find a section of trail like this, this is ideal. Shout out to Vail Lake for building something like this. This is basically gonna take everything that we've been working on in these drills and then putting it into like a real life trail situation. As you can see, it's slippery, you're fighting for traction, but these are not flat turns. Um, so the same technique applies because you're trying to search for grip. You've got a left, right, left, so you can get used to dropping each foot down um, and kind of put everything together. So um, we'll run through it. Section's like perfect for learning this type of stuff. Um, I think being able to session a section like this in kind of a controlled atmosphere is super important. I think a lot of people kind of lose that where they go out and maybe they have a technique they want to work on, but they just want to go like rally trails all day. Um, to me, repetition is the thing that really ingrains something into your brain. So if you can be disciplined enough to slow things down, even if you're a good rider and work on some of the drills we did today and film yourself doing it, I think that's super helpful because you a lot of times don't feel what you will see. If you watch yourself ride, you'll be like, oh, I didn't realize that I'm ducking my elbow in or I'm, I'm not looking out of the corner or whatever it is. There's a lot of little nuance that you might miss. So if you are able to really take the time to slow it down, go through some drills, film yourself, find a section of trail like this where you've got a couple of switchback corners and just like session it over and over and over again to where that just becomes this like very natural feeling thing. Um, I would highly recommend that. All right, guys, so there you go. There's another video. I hope this was helpful. Um, again, like I said, I think this is one of those foundational techniques that is super important to learn. Um, learn all the situations where this is applicable because it's obviously not just flat turns. I think it's anytime you're needing to turn sharper or you're fighting traction and you're looking for more grip to create more lean angle, all these techniques are gonna come into play. So um, yeah, I think the step-by-step -step process for me has also made a big difference and, and being able to teach it to somebody and for myself, if I was learning, I try to think like, how would I break this down simply so that I could learn it in a progression that would be manageable um, and also safe and all that other stuff. So in the future, we'll talk about, um, you know, like how you use your eyes, how braking comes into play, a lot of this other stuff when, when turning. Um, but today I wanted to try to, because it's such a big topic and there's kind of so much that needs to be explained, um, try to focus on just the body positioning for these types of turns. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please share the video, comment. If you got any questions, I'll try to uh, answer them down below and we'll see you in the next one. See you later. <laughs> Thank you.
be like that, huh? <laughs> <laughs>